godly wisdom about sex, life, and more right now on the Bearded Prophet. So glad to have you with me today. I was sitting next to someone on an airplane recently. It was a woman who had gotten pregnant as a teenager. So she was a teenage mom, and now her daughter that she had as a teenager was a teenager herself. And so as we talked, I asked this woman, I said, well, what do you tell your now teenage daughter about sex? What do you do when you talk about that? And she had this great analogy. It's so good I want to share it with you. This woman says, I tell my daughter, men are like rocks. And if you sleep with them, you're going to carry that rock the rest of your life. And so my question is, how heavy do you want to be when you get married? And I was like, oh, that is good. That is good. This is a woman testifying and telling that being intimate with a man like that is like carrying a rock, taking a rock into yourself. And you, don't, you have it with you the rest of your life. This is her own testimony and her own admission. And so I just think that's a great way of explaining things. It should put a little bit of the fear of God into us about our sexuality. And I think that's true for men and for women. Maybe men think that's not going to be the case or I can just forget about it. And yeah, there may be some realities to that, but you are giving a part of yourself or taking something into yourself when you're giving away that intimacy, that precious gift, which is intended for a man and a wife, a husband and a wife to be together. And so I just want to say uh, to you, if you're watching that, that lady that was sitting next to me on that plane, thank you for that gem. I'm so blessed to be able to share it with others. And furthermore, I want to say to you, you are made to preach. You are made to teach and to share the gospel and share wisdom with people. There is a strong call on your life. And I know that you got hurt by the church. I know that you got judged. You got mistreated and have a lot of misgivings about religion. Honestly, I can't blame you. And you're not alone. And some of the videos I talk about on this channel are about the differences between real Christianity and religion in general, or real Christianity and other religions, and just that whole system of religion, which is very often man-made and man-based, versus having a relationship with the living God. And so I'm going to just talk about that for a minute today. That you specifically, and some of you watching, you may be sitting here and you're thinking, I've been hurt by the church. I have been put off or put down by religion. I don't want any part of it. Might be the Christian religion, might be another religion. Really doesn't matter. Religion is not the answer. The whole goal of life is to know and have a relationship with our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And my friends, you don't need a religion to do that. Yes, I do practice Christianity to a good degree. I certainly attend church and I'm involved in certain religious activities, but that's not my life. My life is knowing God, knowing Jesus, walking and talking with Him like it was at the beginning. And that's why I go back to the beginning in the creation story told in the Bible. It says God made man in his image, put him together through the soils of the earth and breathed life into him. And then God would walk with Adam in the cool of the day in the garden. That walking and talking relationship is what God still wants for you and for me and for each one of you watching. And so yes, all of us have sinned. We have turned away from God and pushed him away. We have rejected that relationship. And even if you've never consciously said it, you've been born into a sinful system, you have a seed of sin within you, and just by your own actions, trying to take life in your own hands and do things the way you want, and, and clearly we've also all broken various laws of God. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet things that their, thy neighbor has, the, thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus said, if you look at another woman lustfully, you've already committed the adultery in your heart. So please, let none of us think we can stand before a holy, perfect, never sinning God and say, yeah, that's me too, I've never sinned. No, you will not pass that test. God wants to be with you, but we are separated from Him by our sin. We cannot work our way up to heaven. I talk about that a lot. But the good news 
is that God, who is rich in mercy, came down to us. We could not make it up to Him, but He said, I love you so much, I will send my own Son, my one and only, my best Jesus, He will come from heaven, from ultimate perfection, where He has been worshipped from eternity past to eternity future. Never known pain, never known separation from His Father, never lacked for anything. I will send Him, but I will mandate that He come down, be born of a virgin, poop, pee, live a human life, eat food, be hungry. He fasted 40 days in the desert. He lived everything that we lived. And yet he did not sin. It says, for he who knew no sin, he who was without sin, became sin for us. He became sin for us. And this is why so strongly I know and believe that Jesus did die on that cross. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Because there was no point in him coming otherwise. Unless there is the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And that is why in his perfect blood could make payment for our imperfect blood our imperfect lives. And so because God did that, He made the ultimate and perfect sacrifice for sin. And then He, on the third day, He raised Jesus from the dead because He didn't deserve to die. He now offers each one of us the same process. He says, will you humble yourself, die to yourself, die to your own best efforts, your own attempts to save you. Call on my name and I will take you from that place of personal death and raise you up like I did and join you to me. You will have a living, breathing relationship with the one true God if you call on Him in faith. And you say, you're God, I'm not. I'm sinned, but you're perfect. And I receive you into me today through the power of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross where He died and rose to save me and give me eternal life. That's really it. Jesus came, He died, He rose. And if you come to Him humbly, Get in your own self-grave and let Him raise you up. He will set you free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm not trying to put you into a religious system, although I do recommend you find and join a good church where you come alive and you feel a closer relationship with God. And yes, you need to read the Bible and become familiar with more of who God is and what He says. But it's all unto a pleasing father-son, father-daughter relationship. It's not rigid religion of you must do all these things in order to be accepted. I'm already accepted. Real relationship is already adopted, already accepted, loved by God because I've confessed my sins and called on Jesus. Then I can begin to learn His ways. Then together we can begin to do some good works. But it's never apart from God. It's never in my own strength. That's the good news. So whether you're hearing this for the first time or maybe hearing it for the tenth time, but it's coming through in a fresh way today, I really want to urge you to call out to God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ for that salvation, for that restoration of relationship. If you will humble yourself, you will be lifted up. You will be exalted. But if you exalt yourself and think, I don't need that, I'm good, I'm all set, you will be humbled, the Bible says. God is extending mercy in this hour. He is a Father longing for you to come home. Will you come to Him today?